We now learn how to find the equation of a parabola using root factoring. And the scenario that we'll be looking into in this tutorial is the one that we can see here. We're given a parabola that cuts the x-axis in two points. We know the two x values at which the parabola cuts the x-axis, and we're given this parabola's y-intercept. So by the end of this tutorial, we'll know how to find the equation of any parabola looking similar to the one that we have here. Okay, now let's get started. Let me start by moving this parabola to the side, like so, and now we can get started. So the task we have here is to find this parabola's equation. And since we know that it's a parabola, we also know that it must have an equation that looks like this. y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. But since this parabola cuts the x-axis in two points, indeed we can see that it cuts it when x equals to 1 and when x equals to 5, the theory behind root factoring allows us to state that this parabola's equation can be written in the following form. y equals to a times x minus 1 times x minus 5 where this 1 and this 5 are the x values at which this parabola cuts the x-axis. Writing the quadratic in this way is known as root factoring. Looking at this equation, we can see that the only unknown is the coefficient a, and this is the same a as we would have in the parabola's equation that I wrote at the top here. And to find the value of a, all we need are the coordinates of one other point through which the parabola passes. Looking back at the parabola we were given, we can see that we know the y-intercept. Indeed, this parabola cuts the y-axis when y equals to 10, and the coordinates of that point are therefore 0, 10. In fact, the x-coordinate of any y-intercept will always equal to 0, since we're on the y-axis. The fact that the parabola passes through the point with coordinates 0, 10 allows us to state the following. When x equals to 0, y must equal to 10. And so to find the value of a, we replace the two x's we have here by 0, and we replace y by 10. That looks like this. 10 equals to a times 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 5. That's 10 equals to a times negative 1 times negative 5. That leads us to 10 equals to a times negative 1 times negative 5, which is 5. And finally, dividing both sides of this equation by 5 leads us to 10 over 5 equals to a. And 10 divided by 5 is 2, so 2 equals to a, or simply a equals to 2. And we now know the value of the coefficient a. Combining this result with the factored equation we have at the top, we can state that this parabola's equation can be written y equals to 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 5. And this is the root factored form of this parabola's equation. In an exam question, we may be asked to find this parabola's equation in the form y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. If that's the case, all we need to do is open up these parentheses. That would look like this. We can state that this equals to 2 times x squared minus 5x minus x plus 5. That leads to 2 times x squared minus 6x plus 5. And finally, distributing this 2 across the parentheses leads us to this parabola's equation. That is, y equals to 2x squared minus 12x plus 10. And that's our final answer. We've just found this parabola's equation using root factoring. Before looking at another example, let's just spend a minute to quickly summarize the rules that we've just used. Let's say we have a generic xy grid, something looking like this, and that we have a parabola that cuts the x-axis in two points, something like this. 
and say the values of x at which it cuts the x-axis are p and q. Well, since this is a parabola, we know it must have an equation looking like this. y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. But what the theory behind root factoring allows us to state is because this parabola cuts the x-axis in two points at the x values p and q, this parabola's equation can be rewritten in the following form. y equals to a times x minus p times x minus q. And this will always be true so long as the parabola cuts the x-axis in two points. And to find the value of the coefficient a, all we need are the coordinates of one other point through which the curve passes. In this tutorial, that point is the y-intercept. Okay, we've now quickly summarized the rules. Let's look at another example. Say we're given this parabola and we're asked to find its equation. Well, looking at this, we can see quite clearly that this parabola cuts the x-axis in two points, and the x values at which it cuts the x-axis are negative 1 and 3, and we also notice that it cuts the y-axis at a y-value of negative 15. So we can definitely use the method we've just learnt to find this parabola's equation. Let me start by moving this parabola to the side, like so, and now we can get started. Okay, this is a parabola, so it must have an equation looking like y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. Furthermore, because this parabola cuts the x-axis at two points with x values negative 1 and 3, the theory behind root factoring allows us to state that this parabola's equation can be rewritten as y equals to a times x minus negative 1 times x minus 3. And since when we subtract a negative it turns into an addition, we can write this as y equals to a times x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now all we need to do is find the value of this coefficient a, and to do that, we use the coordinates of any other point through which the curve passes. Looking at the graph we were given, the only other point we can see here is the y-intercept. And this y-intercept has coordinates 0, negative 15. So we can state that when x equals to 0, y must equal to negative 15. So to find a, we replace the two x values by 0, and the y by negative 15. That leads to negative 15 equals to a times 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 3. That's negative 15 equals to a times 1 times negative 3. That's negative 15 equals to a times negative 3. And now dividing both sides of this equation by negative 3, leads to negative 15 over negative 3 equals to a. Since negative 15 divided by negative 3 is 5, we can state that 5 equals to a, or simply a equals to 5. And we now have the value of the coefficient a. Combining this result along with the factored form of this parabola's equation, we can state that this parabola's equation can be written y equals to 5 times x plus 1 times x minus 3. And technically, we could stop there. But if we were asked to find this parabola's equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, all we have to do is distribute these parentheses. In other words, open them up. So let's go ahead and do that. We can state that this is equal to 5 times x squared minus 3x plus x minus 3. That's equal to 5 times x squared minus 2x minus 3. And finally, distributing this 5 across the parentheses leads us to this parabola's equation, which is 
y equals to 5x squared minus 10x minus 15. And that's the final answer. And so that's how to find a parabola's equation using root factoring. Do keep in mind that in this tutorial we've seen the scenario where the parabola cuts the x-axis in two points and the point that we're given is the y-intercept. In the next tutorial we'll see how to find the equation of the parabola when it cuts the x-axis in two points but we don't know the y-intercept. Instead we'll be given the coordinates of another point along the curve's length. For now though that's it for this tutorial.